Well, let me first off just say, uh, for those of you who will know, the hospital I used to work in never let me travel with her again, right? <laughs> and because I am not a politician, I will stick to my timeline. Uh, I say that with the greatest respect, but I want to pay first homage to our leaders who on, are on the board and our leaders in the provincial parliament. Thank you for standing up and being elected in your positions. Leadership matters. Leadership matters. <clears throat> And while I do not appoint any of the ministers in the Ontario government, and I want to be crystal clear that the Premier does that, I do have the distinct honour of appointing deputy ministers and assistant deputy ministers. And the thing I am most proud of under this government as the head of the public service is the support we got to appoint when Dr. Bukowski was head of uh, the CNE for the province. She was at the director level. Dr. Valji is the assistant deputy minister. And that is a very, very senior position in government, reporting directly into the deputy minister of the day. And as she knows, she has unfettered access to me in her role as the chief nurse. And where did I get that idea? From the work that the RNAO did to ensure that the CNE would sit at the board table of every hospital board in this province. And that is work that you advocated for. And that is the model that we brought into government as I took over this role. And I know if Dr. Zahn uh, was here as our deputy minister, she stepped down in the last few months, she was critical in that support. And Dr. Valji, thank you for uh, stepping up to serve in this important role. And for those of you who don't know, she doesn't just manage the nursing file. Uh, she, while she's the CNE, she is head of practice and also deals with a number of our uh, physician issues across and our interprofessional team is issues. She is a powerhouse and it's, it's always a pleasure to serve with you. So a lot of this has been said, so I'm, I'm going to just acknowledge that while we're at 99, let's be clear, we're all thinking to 100. And I can't wait, I cannot wait for us to look back on that entire uh, uh, 100 years of, of nursing in so many different ways. I particularly, though, want to acknowledge that while I am very privileged to hold the position that I hold, I am not here today as the Secretary of Cabinet. I am not here today as the Head of the Public Service. I'm here today as truly somebody who has enormous gratitude for the work that you do. I want to talk about why that is in the roles that I've been in. I've been a CEO of a hospital, two hospitals actually, as, uh, as was said. And, and by the way, for those of you who don't know Trillium, it's the largest community academic hospital in the country. Um, if there's any Trillium people here, God bless you and God bless everybody. Uh, I'm a, I've been a public servant. I actually worked in the Ministry of Health when Minister Whitmer stood up and said, nursing, has to be treated as a profession in the way that we treat other professions and fought hard for that baccalaureate. And I remember that moment and it has changed the profession. I have been, worked, as I said, in the Ministry of Health. I have worked in the community side of nursing. I've worked in the acute care side along nurses. But most importantly, and this is the most important part, I've been a caregiver. And I, I um, Doris knows the whole story, but I, I will keep it very simple. I would not be standing here today in the role that I am privileged to have had it not been for a community nurse when I was 14 years old who ensured that my mom, single mom with a 14 year old, could continue living at home through com community nursing all through my going into university and that nurse I pay homage to and I celebrate every single day of my life because she gave me a small little token. You know those wishes we blow into the air and we make a wish? She, she gave me one encapsulated and it sits on every desk, of whether a student or as a secretary of cabinet every day. I look at that and I say, thank you, Jean. I'm here because of a nurse. When I say nurses are the heart and soul 
of the healthcare system, it, that's not just words. The heart and the soul. The heart that keeps us alive, the soul is who we are. And as you are at the bedside or in the boardroom, you bring two important pieces to that equation. You bring treatment, but you bring care. It's both sides of that. It's the treatment to make things better. It's the care along the journey. And there is nobody who is with the patient, whether it's inside or outside of a hospital or community setting, there is nobody who is with the patient, the client, the recipient, along the entire journey, including, as we saw, even before birth, than the nurse. Nobody understands the patient in the same way. And so, as I think about your profession, and notwithstanding, and as I said, I'm a non-elected, non-partisan public servant, and notwithstanding what we've heard today, I believe that we are bright and strong as we look into the eyes of each and every one of you, and that future is ours, and I know we will continue to make a difference. I want to just say something about the BPSO program. As Doris said, I was the uh, privileged to be able to lead the merger of that hospital, and it was the single most important decision, I believe, as a CEO I made within the first days of that merger, was those two CNEs who came and said, BPSOs, and I said, wow, this is a gift. This is not just about making sure that we had standard, evidence-based practice to ensure that consistency of quality care. But we could take two separate organizations and standardize them and create culture. And what is beautiful about the BPSOs, it's engagement. It's about the front line. It's not about the CEO. It's about the front line coming together to say, this is how we do it better. And by the way, and where's the big book? You know the book. It works. We're not experimenting. It works. And we drove that through the organization. I'm proud to say we were a winner of a BPSO award over the years. And I know each and every one of you that embrace that evidence-based practice, I know each and every one of you that do that and continue to do it through your career, you will grow and you will impact in this room alone hundreds and hundreds of thousands of people. And here's the thing I also want to say. As I stood and talked about Jean, Jean doesn't even know I'm talking about her. Every one of you, somebody is talking about you and they're saying this, without you, I couldn't have made my way through. Without you, I would have felt more alone. And without you, I wouldn't have felt I could make it. You make a difference, and BPSOs are only one aspect of the amazing work that the RNA does. So thank you so much for your, your continued service to the public. Thank you so much for choosing nursing. And to the RNAO, the board, our esteemed leadership, thank you for continuing to push those who are elected, and for those of us unelected to continue to bring the issues to the forefront and working with us to make a difference. Merci, thank you. <laughs>